Nothing in this recording is intended as investment advice, and the people in this recording may hold positions in the companies they talk about. Do not make any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Hello and welcome to Zach's Traders Cafe. Today I'm joined by Colin Burt, who is Executive Chairman at Extract Resources, amongst many other things, aren't you, Colin? Yes, well, you can say that. Yes, certainly um, Chairman of Extract Resources and um, pretty active in now in uh, this uh, copper and um, small mining uh, marina. Yeah, so basically we're speaking after yesterday's very well-attended event in the City of London. I think the great and the good were there, and uh, maybe one or two people are not so great and so good, but a uh, lot of interest in copper, the Colin Birth story, and your listed vehicles. Uh, do you think that that uh, attendance and the, the interest there is a sign that the market's turning? Well, um, it, it was very good, Zach, and um, we had a very broad spectrum of the industry, analysts, brokers, um, high net worth, uh, retail investors, commentators on the blog boards, and um, just about every sort of aspect of the industry you mentioned. So I think that is a, a reflection possibly of the last few weeks' copper. I, I personally believe, but I guess I'm the eternal optimist, but I, I personally believe the industry is turning. We, we can't be left in the, in the cold um, forever. And the fundamentals for copper, as I tried to get over yesterday, the fundamentals for copper are absolutely compelling. So I think combination of all those things, um, Zach, combination of all things. But it was so so nice to be presenting to such a diverse audience. Um, and um, I really did enjoy the feedback afterwards. And, uh, you know, I think you can almost say, just watch this space. I think that the, I, I think I, rem, I, I hate the word junior sector, but I, I've never liked it. But um, I think, the emerging um, smaller mining companies, I think, are going to have the day in the sunshine, Zach. When, when, maybe I think we've got to get this summer over in the sunshine over, if there ever is any. Um, probably October, I think we can probably look for a bright, buoyant market, probably driven by copper fundamentals and um, and, and the copper price, uh, not to mention nickel and um, possibly even zinc. And do you think that, I mean, obviously, we, you know, we, we need copper production, but do you think the... Uh... The bullishness is also going to spread to the explorers because they haven't had a great time of it of late either, have they? Well, it has to, Zach, because, you know, I first got into this, um, re really started pushing myself and my various interests into copper. Um, and we can go back as far as 2017. I did it on um, my estimate for demand. I had no idea that the supply side would get so miserable with so many differing threats around the world. So um, I'm afraid the explorers are going to play a massive role. OK, I mean, BHP and uh, Anglo nearly got together. I understand that's off now. But that wouldn't create any new copper. That's just putting it in the right-hand pocket to the left-hand pocket. The industry needs co new copper. And um, I, I, I said, you know, um, the day of the small miner is back. Um, because if you look at mines in Chile, it's going to take you a discovery today. Um, it's going to take 10 to 15 years to develop it. That's assuming the government, um, progressive governments, and the current government is um, not too keen on mining. So when you think about it, there's got to be lots of these five to 15,000 ton projects emerge and be, be supported. Or in actual fact, they, there's absolutely no chance of meeting the supply characteristics. So it's a very, very, very scary situation which is beginning to develop. Um, undoubtedly demand. Um, and yet the supply side is is fairly grim. Now, if doesn't that doesn't send the majors to the miners, you know, to ourselves, um, I'll be absolutely amazed. I mean, in the past, what happened in the last couple of three weeks with copper would have been, would have would have sent us sore in anyway, because we were, you know, the juniors or the emerging mining companies were um, a call option to the commodity, what was um, current, if you like. And uh, so we really should have reacted to what to um, to what happened to the copper price and didn't. So that's history broken, you know. That's not. That's not. That 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 just surprised me. So I think that it's almost inevitable that um, the majors now got to break away, and I think they'll drop the bars. Like you know, where the one to the million and a half tons of contained copper, I think they know they're not going to get it. So the lower, but at the bar to, I think as low as half a million tons of contained copper. So yes, things are going to change, and I think that audience was. Was a very nice audience, and I met a lot of new people I had not met before, and that was also very refreshing for me. Hopefully, them. 
Well, just going on to, um, as you are uh, here and with your extract uh, hat on, uh, today you announced additional Zambian joint venture exploration licenses. Maybe you can tell us about that. Yeah, and that was very consistent with yesterday's talk that, um, you know, the corridor has been, well, the corridor has been identified that, uh, as I said yesterday, the political boundaries between the Congo and um, uh, Zambia are really immaterial when you think about God's will when he placed the copper in the ground. And so academia always said that, um, you know, the Congo style mineralization should spread into Zambia, continue into Zambia. And um, we did, we were the first group to test it in joint venture with First Quantum. And we proved the architecture that makes Kamoa. Kamoa is about 60 kilo, uh, kilometers away and is the world's second richest mine. You know, the mining grades of um, about three and a half, four percent and they've got grades of up to six percent. Absolutely fantastic. And the coin and a lot of money and the mine's still not in, in full production. So we're on a natural trend to that. And we, you know, our partner together with First Quantum, we proved the architecture, we proved everything was in place, the Fulton, Grand Conglomerate, the Petty Conglomerate, and all of the structures that you would expect in order to, to replicate that um, particular style of mineralization. Not to mention the Colby's style mineralization, which had been uh, dominant in that part of the world and discovered in mine for, for many, many, many years now. So there's a corridor, if you like, and Ivano, in actual fact, continued that corridor, and they've stamped a, um, a massive, massive amount of ground um, in Angola um, on that same trend. And of course, we're in between. So there's kind of, if you like, a trend line between Kamoa straight down through to Angola. And these two licenses are bang on that trend line. So Zach, the licenses could not be in a better position. And we're very excited to have... Um, made that deal with our partners Cup Eleven. So that's a to, to me, that's a tremendous uh, boost for our extract company and its shareholders. And so given what you said earlier in the conversation, this is the time to be stockpiling up those uh, licenses. I think so. Well, you know, if you can, I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the magic word. If you can, um, these things have got to be, you know, you, um, these things are basically to take take years to get in a position to be able to get them anyway, and quite frankly, anybody who was sort of saying I'm going to do it now would be a little bit late. Um, most of the licenses are procured. There's a lot of new companies, big ones, going back to Zambia, and of course, new ones as the markets are picking up a little bit, trying to find positions in Zambia. But um, I'm afraid on that Kamoa Western Foreland situation. Um, the ground ground is very tightly held with the major mining companies. And uh, the second best target is the IOCGs. And there, and of course, there are some opportunities in traditional copper belt style mineralization. But the Western Foreland is the magical area. Western Foreland, basically, I think, is the world's most prospective new copper area. And that just about outstrips the potential because, you know, if you're talking about um, four, five, six percent of copper containing ground, you don't need um, kilometers and kilometers of strike um, to build up a very valuable resource. So um, anybody planning to go there, I think, would you know, would have some difficulty. Most of the ground is staked. Well, all of the ground is staked and has been staked for some considerable time. So we count ourselves very fortunate to be able to join venture into this property, these properties. OK, well, on that note, uh, Colin Bird, Executive Chairman at Extract Resources, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Our time is always. Thank you very much indeed.